Math 10 Relations Lesson 5, Slope of a Line, Part A. What is slope? Well, slope is the amount of incline or steepness of a line expressed as a number. The larger the value, the larger the incline or slope. Now, how do we calculate slope? Well, we calculate slope as measuring the rise, which is the vertical distance between two points, and divided by the run, which is the horizontal distance between two points. Now, when would we use this formula? We would use this when given a diagram. So, notice example one, we were given a diagram. How do I calculate my slope? Well, first I need to know my rise. My rise is my change in my y values. So to go from two to five, I went up three. That is the difference in the y values. To calculate my run, I calculate the difference between the x values. I'm going from one to seven. That means my run is gonna be six, which is the difference in the x values. Now, I write out my formula. Slope is equal to rise over run. My rise is three. My run is six. Now, I always have to reduce my slope, which gives me a slope of one half. Example two, state the rise, the run, and then find the slope. Now, we always have to have two points that are right on the grid. Notice that I've given you these. So, my I'm also given a diagram. So what does that mean? I'm gonna use the formula rise over run. So how far up do I go between these two points? Well, it looks like six divided by how far over do I go between these two points? It looks like eight. Therefore, my slope is gonna be six over eight which I can reduce to three over four. Example B, notice the lines seem very similar, but going in opposite directions. So again, it's a diagram. I'm gonna use slope is equal to rise over run. What is my rise? Well, between these two points, I'm gonna go up six. What is my run? Well, my run between these two points, how far over am I going? is eight. So if this is the case, then my slope is six over eight or reduced to three over four. But how can that be? How can these two lines have exactly the same slope? And the answer is they don't. B, one of my values is negative. To go from one point to the other, I have to go in the negative direction for one of them. So even though these two lines have similar looks, they're in opposite directions, which makes one of the slopes negative. Looking at C, again, I've got a diagram. I'm gonna go rise over run. Now, notice this is a horizontal line. How, how, how far up do I go between these two points? Well, that's zero. How far over? I'm gonna go over eight. Well, when I punch zero into eight, or zero divided by eight into my calculator, I get an answer of zero. So all horizontal lines have a slope of zero. What about a vertical line? Well, again, it's a picture. So I'm gonna use my formula rise over run. Now, how far up do I go between these two points? Looks like I'm going from negative two to positive two, so that's four. How far over do I go? That looks like zero. Now, when I punch four divided by zero into my calculator, I get error. And that is because it's not possible. So we label this kind of slope as undefined. Looking at our example E, notice there isn't a grid. So in order to calculate the slope, I still have a picture. I'm gonna use rise over run. So first, what is my rise? My rise is gonna be the difference in my y value. So eight minus two. So I've gone up six. What is my run? Well, my run is gonna be my difference between my x values. So I've gone over four. Notice this is a positive slope. 
When I figure this out, I wind up getting 6 over 4, which I can reduce to 3 over 2. So again, how did we calculate rise? We subtracted the two y values. How did we calculate run? We subtracted the two x values. This leads us into our next formula. We would use this formula when we're not given the diagram and when we are given two points. The formula is slope is equal to y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2. Now it's very important to note that x1 and y1 have to come from the same point. Notice the letter we use to design designate slope is m. All right, let's practice this using our new slope formula. A, a line that goes through 6, 4 and negative 5, negative 2. I want to find the slope. First, I write out my formula. Now, I need to know which one of these is going to be my x1, y1. It doesn't matter which one you choose. However, we got to make sure that our x1 and our y1 come from the same point. So I'm going to use my first point as my x1, y1. So that means that my y1 is 4 and my x1 is 6. Now I'm going to subtract the values from the other point. So my y value is negative 2. My x value from the other point is negative 5. Notice 4 subtract negative 2 is going to give me a positive value of 6. 6 subtract negative 5 is going to give me a positive value of 11. All right, stop the recording and try B on your own. Okay, hopefully this is what you wound up getting. Notice that I have taken the negative value from the denominator and moved it into the numerator. Proper notation says that we should have the negative either in the numerator or in front of the entire fraction, not in the denominator. Example four, drawing lines using slope. Draw a line with a slope of negative 3 over 5 going through the points negative 2, negative 1. Now, there are infinite possibilities for lines with a slope of negative 3 over 5. So what I need is a starting point to work from. That's where the point comes in. They give me a point of negative 2, negative 1. So I'm going to plot that point. I'm going to go over negative 2, and I'm going to go down 1. Now, I need another point so I can draw my line. That's where the slope comes in. Notice the slope is negative, which means one of my values has to go in the negative direction. So I could start by going down 3, which is negative 3, and then going over 5 in the positive direction. Why? Because I go rise over run. Now I know that there is another point at the end there that is on this line. I can now draw my line and put arrows on the end. Is there another way we could do this? And the answer is yes. Instead of going down three, I could go up three, which is positive. Now, in order for this to make sense, one of my values has to go in the negative direction. So that would mean that I would have to go over five in the negative direction. Notice that there would be a point right on the line at the end of five. So this is another way that we could possibly draw our line in the event that we weren't able to go down three. Example five, slope as a rate of change. Another name for slope of a situation is called the rate of change. We do this by finding the change in the dependent value and divide it by the change in the independent value. So our example, Johnny goes for a run. For the first five minutes, he just warms up by jogging. The rest of the run is at full speed. 
At full speed, he covers 2,700 meters. The total run took 18 minutes. What was his rate of change at full speed? What's my first step? My first step is to identify my dependent and my independent value. So my dependent variable is distance. My independent variable is time. Why? Because how far he runs depends on how long he has been running. My next step is to write out my equation. My rate of change is equal to my dependent value, which is distance, divided by my independent variable, which is time. At this point, I'm ready to substitute in my values. How far did he run at full speed? 2,700 meters. How long did he run at full speed? Well, hang on, the total run took 18 minutes, but five of those minutes were jogging. So I'm gonna to have to subtract 18 and five, and that's gonna mean his total time running at full speed was 13. This winds up giving me a rate of change of 208 meters per minute. Step three. My final step, because this is a word problem, is to have a word answer. So the rate of change at full speed is 208 meters per minute. 